Hey everybody, it's Argelfump. This is the 2020 Nancy Drew Games Mega Marathon. How are you guys doing? Are you guys doing okay? I know everybody's stuck inside because of the quarantine, but hopefully you're all doing well, nobody's getting sick, and we can enjoy Nancy Drew message in a haunted mansion. Hi, it's Nancy Drew. So Welcome what mode should I play on? Mystery. Junior detective message or senior detective mansion. mode? Choose your difficulty level to start off. If you're new to adventure games, you might want to click on the tutorial button to learn how to play the game. Hmm, tutorial, huh? That would be extremely that would be extremely useful. And I <laughs> I just remembered I forgot to grab uh, uh, the solution to that really terrible puzzle at the end of the game. <laughs> um uh-oh, hopefully that won't uh, mess me up uh, when I actually get to that puzzle. Usually I just have the solution written down. Okay, so we got to vote for senior, senior, and then junior, and then junior. Ah, that's a tie! Oh, but another vote for senior! Looks like the tiebreaker! Woo! Ah! Dear Beth. Hello from stormy San Francisco. This time I'm staying in a beautiful Victorian mansion. You'd love the room I'm in. It's full of old Chinese furnishings and some interesting knickknacks. The owner of the house, Rose Green, is a friend of Hannah and asked me to come out and help her with some renovation work. She and her friend Abby hope to turn the place into a bed and breakfast by next month. But from what I gathered, Rose isn't sure if she can open in time. Ever since they started the renovations, they've had a lot of accidents. Could it be just bad luck, or is there something more sinister at work? <laughs> I'm sure I'll find out. Love, Nancy. I really do like this game. This is, this is like the first Nancy Drew game, which I consider to be super excellent, and I would recommend it to anyone, whereas the other two kind of have technical uh, difficulties getting them to load and everything, and some of the puzzles are weird but this one this one's pretty solid there's a dragon besides for this puzzle you probably know what puzzle i'm talking about we need to know every single symbol of uh kanji or hanji or hans I, I forget which one it is so we need to memorize like nine of those symbols for the last puzzle of the game and that puzzle is just killer <laughs> okay so, uh, let's, let's get started here. We're in Nancy's room. Listen, my child, to the story of dreams, and know that the beginning is more difficult than it seems. When the ten daughters are reunited in order, when the four-sided box loses its border, when the Eye of the Phoenix is in your hand, when the bird of fire can see again, when the moon sleeps and the sun plays, the king of the sky will shine his rays. And hidden beneath a river of colors will find will lie a gate to gold and wonders. Woohoo! Okay, so uh, that's 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 that last puzzle of the game. Kind of difficult. Ooh, I didn't notice that. There's like some sort of dragon thingy here. Arr, arr, arr. It's, a, it's, a, it's a lion. Arr. Very scary lion. Okay, so yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, we're here, and, uh, we've got this grate. Hi, it's grate. It's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. I guess maybe we can fix it later on. So what should we do? Who should we talk to first? Should we talk to Abby? Should we talk to Charlie? Should we talk to Rose? Um, we can't talk to Lewis. This game has a, a time feature, a time feature, uh, which was not present in the other games. So time, I forget, Say like, let's say like every 30 seconds equals 15 seconds in the game. Uh, maybe more like 40 seconds. Anyway, uh, so people are there at specific times. Great poem, awful puzzle. <laughs> Great comment. Uh, Rose, okay, two votes for Rose. I, I like having the, the live stream chat here. We've currently got 92 people in the chat. So, you, I will rely on you to tell me what to do. And we're meeting Rose. A rose such a clatter. Hello, Nancy. I'm very glad you could come out here. We can really use your help, seeing how far we are behind schedule. 
Are you all ready to do some renovation work? I love how Rose's head just keeps bobbing to the side like there's some crazy dance music playing in the background. I sure am. This house must have quite a history. What do you know about it? Not very much, but Abby found some interesting old papers that might give us clues about the history of the house. They're in the parlor if you want to take a peek. There's also an old time saloon in the basement, so it's possible the house was once a hotel. Because hotels generally have saloons inside them. That's how it works in San Francisco. Cool. So a saloon, wow. A saloon? Oh, this place really does have a history. Who was the original owner? Almost all the records on these old houses were destroyed in the Great Earthquake. So we don't know much about the origins of the place. Abby thinks all our accidents were caused by some restless spirit or a curse. I'm not one to believe in bad luck, but it's been one thing after another. Maybe Charlie doesn't have the expertise for these renovations, but his rates are so affordable. I sometimes wonder, though, if this old house would be worth more burned to the ground. <laughs> Enough chit-chat. Hannah tells me you're a real pro with puzzles. Take a look in the corner. Those wood tiles should fit inside the inlay pattern of the floor. Abby and I tried for hours, but it's just too complicated. I'm sorry for not introducing you around, but everyone posts their schedule here in the dining room. It's kind of like Command Central. Let me know how far you get with that puzzle. And thanks again for helping us, Nancy. It's funny, you know, Rose is like, enough chit-chat after talking to you for a long time. <laughs> Just a second here. I'm going to get started. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Just had to type something into the chat there. So, uh, we have this puzzle. You you can right-click to rotate the pieces. This piece is pretty, pretty easy to do. So, the tile puzzle, kind of difficult. Uh, yeah. It's, it needs to be pixel perfect. So, uh, like you saw there... It changes color when you've got it correct. So let's assume that's a good one and then leave it there. That looks like a good one too. Um, okay, we'll, we'll do this one here. Yeah, that looks good. It looks like they're touching. And then here's where it might get difficult. Oh, perfect fit. Okay, never mind. Okay, it might get difficult here, maybe. Yeah, perfect fit. Okay, beautiful. Uh, uh, oh, that is very beautiful. Uh, uh, do, 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 beautiful. Yes, I'm doing it, everybody. I'm not failing this puzzle. Yay. I did it! Woo! Oh yeah! Nancy Drew Master! So that puzzle's super difficult, super duper difficult. Rose, I solved your puzzle. Give me another one. How's that inlay puzzle coming along? I finished it! Wonderful! But now I've got something else for you. I set up a ladder upstairs so you can chip off the broken tiles on the hallway ceiling. You'll need to look around for a chisel or paint scraper for the job. I'm not sure where Charlie keeps them. Woohoo! I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. So long. Yeah, whoever removed those tiles must be the real culprit of the game. Okay. So, uh, should we talk to another character, or should we try to solve the, uh, the puzzle that Rose just gave us going upstairs? Bed and breakfast. Cat napping. This is how to create a four-poster bed for your cat. Why does your cat need a four-poster bed? I, I don't know. It did take Abby and Rose hours to solve that puzzle. Um, yeah, it's a very, very difficult puzzle. I wonder what this door leads to. We don't really get to explore that side of the house, do we? Hmm, this looks like more renovation restoration work. Nancy is basically free labor for Rose, yeah. So here's a schedule for everyone. I'm gonna take a picture of this with my phone. Okay, we got a vote to go to the attic. So let's let's do that. 
Ah, how do I back away from this? There we go! Okay, you turn at the bottom of the screen. Whew! Got really confused there. And here's another symbol you need to memorize. Fire. So, wow, she has fire insurance for one million dollars. Signed by Helen O'Leary, the cow. H.L. Cow. Okay, so a cow got her fire insurance. Let's, let's, uh, okay. Let's just solve the puzzle then. The paint scraper is hidden over here. It's awesome. Okay, we got the paint scraper. Uh, that's how I can get up to the attic. This is a creaky stair. Ooh. We could do the death sequence where Nancy gets fired for just dropping the chandelier. I'm doing it. So Nancy's friends get mad at her when she drops the chandelier like this. Whoops. You did what? Um... I unhooked the chandelier, and it crashed to the floor. I can't believe it! No wonder Rose asked you to leave. I don't know what got into me. Sounds like you really goofed up. Just don't vandalize the next house you stay in, okay? Especially if it's ours. Jeez. Harsh, George. Majorly harsh, George. I was just having fun destroying things. Okay, so here's the ladder. And we peeled off the tiles. It's locked. But this thing is locked. We need a key. Is it this key? It's locked. No, it's not that key. Let me see. I think the key is in Nancy's room. Let's look. Ah, creepy noise. Yeah. I know there's a key here, right? Yeah, found it. Woo! Although it could be the key that's uh, in Charlie's area. Charlie's area also has a key. It's locked. It's locked. Nope, it's the key in Charlie's area. Okay, well. Let me solve that puzzle then. Let's see, so Charlie, Charlie's scheduled. Charlie is there from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So if I set my alarm to 7 a.m., Charlie's not there. <sighs> morning, Nancy. Good morning. Oh yeah, and this grate was stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. Hmm. It's stuck. Doesn't look like that's the right tool to undo that grate. I'll figure out what that tool is. Let's see. Charlie is downstairs. He's in the saloon, as uh, Rose said. But he's not here right now. It's stuck. Everything's stuck. It's stuck. <laughs> Everything's broken. Poor Nancy. There's a completely empty, innocuous area. I don't know what would be in this area. It's so innocuous, there's nothing weird about it at all. Let's see, I can steal that screwdriver. I bet that will undo the grate. So over here, we have the cash register. One of these buttons opens it. For the key to the attic! Why is it in the cash register in the basement? I don't know. I guess we needed a reason to come to the basement when Charlie wasn't around. Alrighty, so what do we have here? I have some paints. Ah, San Francisco. Bread and breakfast. Yummy! Especially eating bread for breakfast. Mm-hmm. Okay, so everybody wants... Uh, a, a bed and breakfast, yes. Well, it is a very old house that has been abandoned for a while. It's no surprise everything's broken. Oh, there's a little rose design. That's cute. Famous non-alcoholic drinks and how to mix them. 
Here's a Minley Festival Punch. Ginger Whisper. Great for parties. Makes 20 servings. That's a lot of servings. I think the piano is broken too. It's stuck. Why is everything broken it's stuck. here? It's stuck. Man. Oh well. I think we can actually look at this thing too. It's gonna be another uh, symbol because it's got Swanee River, so that's the symbol for river. Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away. Ah! There's a ghost monster up the stairs. It makes my poor heart sway. Yeah, I'm scared now. Somebody was spying on me. It's evil. Okay, Rose, finish your next chore. How are the tiles coming along? I'm all finished, but you should know what I found. I'm sure it's very interesting, but unless it's really important, I've got other things to worry it's about. It's really Let's important. See. If you're any good at fixing things, there's a dumbwaiter in the hallway that's not working. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Don't work too hard. So we're gonna uh, fix the dumbwaiter next. Okay, so should we go upstairs to the attic first, or should we talk to one of the uh, various characters? I mean, we've still got some more characters to meet, right? I think we do. We've still got Charlie. It's not Charlie time, though. Yeah, yeah. So Charlie's not here yet, because it's not 8 o'clock. Charlie doesn't show up. What? That's Abby snoring. <laughs> yes, that is definitely lots of snoring with, with Abby. Okay, well, I'll try to open up this thing now that I've got a screwdriver. It's stuck. Okay, three votes. Two votes for Attic, one vote for Lewis. Yes? What is behind this grate? A speaker. A speaker. How curious. Why is there a speaker behind this grate? I don't know. Boy, is that confusing and strange. It's locked. Both of these keys look the same. Okay, so we're going up here now. And you can't escape, right? Oh no! It's stuck. Everything in this house is broken. We're going to die here. No, no. Here's a tile. We need to find three of them. The Golden Gazette. Wow, these newspapers are probably worth a ton of money. We should we should save those. Our cell. The ah, creepy doll head is just creepy and stuff. Okay, this is for the dumb waiter. It's an iron. It's an iron, so I can use it to iron out all my problems. And this is a weird notebook, uh, unless I'm mistaken. Manufactured in a strange quarter of the, um, I can't read that. Has known as the Enchanted Dragon. I can't read this handwriting. It's very handwriting stuff. Yes. Super duper creepy area though. This is just, just the creepiest. Creepy attic. And a crowbar. Crowbars are always useful. That looks like it would be a cool painting if it could be restored. Is it like somebody wearing a cape? Is it the queen? And then we've got a dress figurine. And the key It's locked. Is the small one. Yeah, okay, so we've got a bunch of things we can look at here. The bandage treasure. I'll wait in Yerba Buena Town on a house high above the sea. This is the tale of the bandit's loot and how it came to be. That golden dreams of bis blissful love soon failed you and me. Oh my love, ride far and fast for me. I'll wait in Yerba Buena Town on a house high above the sea. I traveled as far as the Golden Gate, where I held your treasure true. Where the rainbow ends in Christmas gold, and the phoenix rises too. Oh, my love, ride far and fast for me. I'll wait in your Babuena town, on a house high above the sea. What I'm seeing? 
Yes, we have a, a music. You see these notes? These notes? I, I guess I could take a picture of these notes. Are these the notes I need to play on the piano? Or something like that? It could be. So, uh, yeah. I took a picture of those notes so I'll be able to play them. Uh, they did. The Bandit's Treasure. We did that. It was presented here at the Golden uh, Gardenia. And this is a message from Eval Dez. My letter shall serve as an introduction for my faithful employer, Wang Tang. You had been in my service and head chef for over ten years. It is with much regret that I must discharge him. And were it not for the retirement of my long word, I would still retain his services. E. Valdez. Oh. Well, I'm glad he was very, very well received. That's Lizzie Applegate. And then this is another uh, uh, symbol. It's for beginning. That's how you write beginning. Oh, I know there's like another piece of paper here. There's always like another piece of paper that you miss. Okay, got that one. Got that one. Got that one. That one. Okay. I'll assume I finished everything here. Because it looks like I looked at everything, right? Here's a random mysterious storybook. The random mysterious storybook. That's what I was thinking earlier. She pushed her auburn hair back behind her ear and continued the arduous work. Each pile of dirt seemed heavier than the last, and the damp night air was stifling. Somewhere in the distance, a clock struck midnight. Suddenly, the sound of metal hitting metal resounded from the bottom of the pit. Carolyn quickly dropped to her knees and dug around the dull metallic chest. Soon the lid was uncovered, and she pried its lock open with her crowbar. Aha! That is a clue. See, crowbars can pry open stubborn locks, like this one! So that's how you escape the attic. Let's go downstairs and tell Rose. Rose, I got I, I, I got the attic thing figured out. Oh, I didn't do the dumbwaiter yet. Oh my. Let's let's get the dumbwaiter uh, fixed. Tie the iron here to this rope. Now we uh, go upstairs. Other end of the dumbwaiter. It's another tile, as well as this symbol, I. Okay, so now let's uh, go downstairs. Go downstairs, going downstairs. Gonna meet Rose. Hello. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Thanks for your help. Oh, we can't talk to her about um, fixing the dumbwaiter. That's odd. I, I thought for sure we would be able to do so. And let's talk to Charlie. Let's meet Charlie, everybody. It's Charlie in his very, very wrinkly shirt. Hi, you must be Nancy. My name's Charlie. Hey, Chuck. How's it going? Hi, Charlie. You must have a lot of experience to work on such a big house. I uh, no, but I learned quickly. Even Lewis said so. Have you met him yet? He's helping Rose with the house. Yeah, he showed me how to do some of the remodeling work. No, I haven't met him yet. Does he work for Rose? He's an antique dealer, I, I think. I guess he does consulting work for Rose, like on Victorian furnishings and stuff. Do you have any idea why there's been so many accidents on this project? I have no idea. People are blaming me, but it's not my fault. I know what I'm doing. I know how to do this work. Listen, Nancy, I really need to get back to work. I'm repairing some floorboards, so be careful walking around. Rose is looking for you earlier. Maybe she has something for you to do. See ya. Bye, Charlie. Hey, Nancy. I really need to finish this up. Sorry. Aw, he doesn't want to talk to me. He's too busy. Meh. I remember this. Scandal! Horror! Outrage! 
citing the increased popularity of stage reviews and decreased charitable contributions, the Ladies Protection Society has announced a shocking new strategy for raising much-needed funds for the benefit of widows and orphans in our region. No longer will the good ladies of our society hold garden parties, afternoon teas, or cakewalks to solicit contributions. Instead, these proper wives, daughters, and mothers will act on stage like common troubadours and settle popular plays in order to raise money for their good works. As decent gentlemen, we should not allow the fair sex to denigrate themselves to this level of vulgarity. Women belong in the home, not upon the stage. <laughs> Editor. So the editor was not at all happy about them putting on a play uh, with Lizzie Applegate. Uh, what was it, a hundred years ago? My goodness. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't think Lewis is going to be there. I think uh, we actually need to meet Abby, Charlie, and Rose before Lewis shows up in his little area. We can go and see if he's there. Nope, he is not here. He does have a book on chess. That's how chess knights work. I, uh... Let me see. You, you need to do the maze game to break into his computer. I guess we can do that. Okay. Let's do this. Oh, yeah, and if you press, uh, what is it? You press M for maze, and that shows you a little map. Okay, so I presumably, uh, I am the blue button. I am the blue button. Okay. I see how this works. Yeah, this is a really, really long, terrible maze. I do like how the maze changes a little bit. That's pretty cool. Just gonna uh, just walk backwards through that part of the maze. Take forever. Woo. Now we've got little little cupboards, yeah. This does look like it's just an old screensaver or something. Even a bit like Minecraft, everything's all blocky. <gasps> Did it! Okay, we got onto his computer. Files, okay. I don't care about those hotels. Okay, here we go, we've got, we've got his uh, passwords. Great, now I've got all of Lewis's passwords. Um, do we have the password for the laptop? It's antiques, great, great. That's good. No printer, no no uh, CD, or a floppy disk. Yeah, there's nothing on the computer, just the passwords. But we do have the password for his, uh, his, 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 um, his briefcase, which is not here, so I can't use it right now. Here's another symbol, symbol number four. Are there any 
books here. There, there. I mean, obviously there are books here, but there are some books we can read, unless I'm mistaken. Oh, and there's another thing. Cool. That's another tile. This book has a... Oh, it's a picture. Yep, that's a picture. We'll look at that picture much later on in the game. Here's where you want to put those tile things. It won't fit. It won't fit. That gives you a top secret hidden passageway, which I'll check out later. Theory of music. So if you don't know how music works, this is how it works. Yay! So let's go into this room. So there were old time documents. Uh, Rose specifically told us about this document. So E. Valdez, that's the person who used to own this place according to the phone company. Cool. We're pleased to announce your bid for the property has been accepted. Woo! And uh, the Ladies Protection Relief Society. Yes, we saw that. Is there anything else here? No. It's good to know it's here. Yeah, it's a fire extinguisher. That's good to know. Oh yeah, and here we have some sort of letter, right? We have two letters, I it looks like. Dear Hugh, I'm doing great. How are you? Yes, the rumors are true. I bought myself a Victorian mansion. It's funny you should mention Abby. She's actually the one who decided to go in on this venture with me. We're still in the process of blah, 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 blah. And this letter. Here, Rose, how are you doing? I haven't gotten message from you in some time. How's life treating you? Uh, as I heard you're trying to plan some crazy scheme to buy a Victorian mansion. Okay, so cool letters. Cool letters, I guess. They're just nice letters from her friend. Okay, let's call home. Let's call all these people. Woo! Drew Residence, Hannah Groon speaking. Hi, hey, Hannah. Hannah. Nancy, how are you? And how's Rose? Great. I'm really glad you had Rose invite me out here. Her house is so beautiful. I'm so happy you're out there. But I'm worried about all the accidents she's having. There's just been so many. I didn't realize Rose was so young. How did you meet her? Doesn't she look great? You'd never think she was a day over 50. I met Rose at the River Heights Community Theater after she retired from the school district, don't you remember? Abby was working with us, too. Have you met Abby yet? No, I have not. And Rose is over 50. I did not know that. No, I haven't. Tell me about her. She's a friend of Rose who helped her buy the house. She's very... Interesting. Eccentric, I suppose, is the word. Yeah, this is the only game where you can actually call Hannah. Uh, for the rest of the series, no Hannah, barely any mention of her. Um, she sends messages in, like, uh, the haunted carousel, I believe, and I think that's it. Rose mentioned some accidents she's had. What do you know about them? She doesn't say much, but I know they've become worse and worse. That's one of the reasons why I asked you to visit her, to see if everything is all right. Do you suspect there's something more to these accidents? <sighs> I don't know. Rose is under a lot of pressure to open that bread and breakfast on time, and I'm worried that it may be too much for her. I imagine the mansion was very expensive. Rose spent her entire life savings on the house. If this doesn't work out, she won't have 30 more years to earn the money back. Well, I should let you get back to your renovation work. Thank you for calling. There's probably no reason for concern. But be on the lookout for anything unusual. Goodbye, dear. Thanks, Hannah. Okay, so let's call Bess. Hello? Hi, Bess. It's Nancy. Hi, Nancy. George is here. Let me put her on the speakerphone. Nancy? Hi, George. Hey, what's up? I'm in San Francisco, helping a friend of Hannah's renovate an old Victorian mansion. 
She wants to open up a bed and breakfast. Unfortunately, some strange accidents have delayed the project. Uh-oh. Sounds like you've got another case on your hands. Have you asked everybody about these accidents? Not yet, but I will. So, what are you two up to? Well, speaking of renovations, George is redecorating her room and staying with me till it's done. But we haven't had any accidents. Except when you spilled the soda all over the carpet. Okay, but it wasn't very unusual. So, tell us more about what's been going on. Do you know anything about the house's history? I met the resident handyman, Charlie. He's pretty young, and I don't think he has much experience. Maybe he doesn't charge very much, so he's probably a good bargain for Rose. Or maybe he's just cute. <laughs> Bess, is that all you can think about? No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's, 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 he's totally adorable. Listen to this. I found a secret attic and an old desk. It looks like no one's been in there for years. There's probably a lot of clues about the house in there. Oh, what was in the desk? An old playbill for a musical called The Bandit's Treasure. The Bandit's Treasure? Maybe there is treasure in the house. I found some letters written by E. Valdez. I guess he was the owner of a hotel named The Golden Gardenia. Valdez! Golden Gardenias? I thought they were all white. That's it! Don't you see? The hotel has gold hidden in it, and Valdez is watching over it. I don't think so, Bess. Hmm, so, can you give me a clue as to what to do next? Can you guys give me a clue? I'm not sure what to do next. Okay, we'll help you. But since you're a senior detective... We'll make the hints a little harder. I suspect... You need to find some. I need to find some... I should get going. Suspects. Talk to you later. Call us! I get it, I get it. And this is kind of weird. Uh, Nancy has a friend named Emily. No idea who Emily is. Um, she's apparently a, a photographer who's one of Nancy's friends and just lives in the area. This is Emily. Hi, Emily. It's Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew? I haven't heard from you in ages. How's Hannah in River Heights? You're not in San Francisco, are you, my dear? Yes, I am. Actually, I am. I'm helping one of Hannah's friends, Rose Green, renovate this wonderful old Victorian mansion. She wants to open up a bed and breakfast. Hmm. Seems to be the trend these days. I'll bet you're staying in the Haight-Ashbury district. I'm not sure. The place is located on California Lane. 4653, I think is the number. You know, you're lucky you caught me at home. I've been traveling most of these days, but after that crazy tour of Egypt... By the way, riding a camel is not as easy as it looks. My editor gave me an assignment right here in town. It'll be on the Dragons of San Francisco. Cool. I hope you won't be riding them. What were you doing in Egypt? Oh, you know, the usual. Pyramids, bazaars, the Sphinx. But what are you up to, Nancy? Why'd you call? Is there anything I can help you out with? Can you tell me about the Chinese writing system? I seem to come across a lot of Chinese symbols. Oh, it doesn't surprise me. The Chinese have been an important part of San Francisco history for over a hundred years. The symbols are called Hanzi, and each one represents a particular thing, or an idea, or an action. You find them all over on business cards, takeout cartons, artwork. I found some old papers in the house. Plus a page from a phone directory dated 1894. Oh, that sounds valuable. It's hard to find old documents like that before 1906. What do you know about the Bandit's Treasure? Bandit's Treasure? Oh, you mean the play. The rep did a season where they performed old local plays, including the Bandit's Treasure. I've never seen it, but I hear the music is fantastic. It is amazing. Okay, have you uh, seen uh, Hidden Rooms? Have you ever come across hidden rooms in Victorian mansions? No, but I've read that many houses were only partially rebuilt after the Great Earthquake, closing off damaged rooms from the rest of the house. Do you know where Yerba Buena Town is? That's what San Francisco was called back during the Spanish colonial period, but no one calls it that anymore. Tell me about the Spanish and San Francisco. Oh, you could write a book on that. The Spanish were the first Europeans to settle this area during the 1700s, and it stayed that way until after the Mexican-American War when it was handed over to the United States. It couldn't have happened at a better time because gold was discovered outside the city not more than two years later. 
Oh my. <laughs> With all of that gold around, I'd imagine there's a lot of buried treasure in this town. Yeah, you'd think that, but I've never heard of any in San Francisco, except for Treasure Island out in the bay. But that's named after the book, not some legend. I should get going. Goodbye, Emily. Talk to you later. Sounds good. Okay, so we've talked to Nancy's friends. I think uh, we've got nothing else to do besides meet Abby. Let's meet this mysterious Abby. That's a picture. Okay, so the two doors lead outside. No, they do not lead outside. The two doors lead to here. I guess that means the single door leads outside. Abby, we saw her snoring earlier. Uh, I guess we heard her snoring. We didn't actually see her snore. Abby, are you there? Hello, Nancy. I see you've arrived safely from your long journey. But I'm sensing an aura of danger around you. I can tell you're an inquisitive type, a little skeptical, and that you don't believe in ghosts. Oh my. Ghosts? How do you know I don't believe in ghosts? <laughs> I know many things. I know how to communicate with the spirits, and I know things about people that they don't tell me. Call it intuition or ESP. The spirits in this house are interested in you, especially since you don't believe in them. Watch out. They may give you a rough time just to get your attention. Do you think these spirits are responsible for the recent accidents? I sense a very strong but restless spirit within these walls. And a restless spirit can soon become an angry spirit. Who could this restless spirit be? I'm not sure, but for some reason the name Valdez has a strong connection with this mansion. Do you have any more information on Mr. Valdez? Now, if you will please excuse me, I need to prepare myself for this evening. At that time, more will be revealed. Um, Abby, you didn't even pay attention to my question and um, just said something else. She sounds busy. She doesn't um, sound busy. She sounds... She sounds busy. like she's thinking about eating dinner. Hello. How did you find Charlie? He just showed up one day. It was really odd. I remember Abby and I were in the basement talking about hiring someone to help us. 20 minutes later, the doorbell rang and there stood Charlie, looking for work. Why are there dead roses in the parlor? Are they dead again? For some reason, they seem to die right after I buy them. It's strange. I've never seen that happen before. It must be the weather or something. Where did Abby find those papers that are in the parlor? She told me they were in her room, which surprised me since it was completely empty when we moved in. Now the room you're staying in was crammed with furniture. I think most of it was original with the house. How did you meet Abby? She was the drama coach back in River Heights, and we worked on a couple of plays together. My bid on this house was too low, so she pitched in her savings to help me get the place. If it weren't for Abby, I couldn't have afforded this place. Yes, it's very expensive to get housing in San Francisco. Whose laptop is that in the library? Lewis leaves it here, but he doesn't like people to use it. He said he's had trouble with viruses lately. What is Abby planning for tonight? She's putting on some kind of seance tonight to contact these ghosts or whatever she thinks is causing all of these accidents. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Bye, Nancy. Let's see if Charlie has anything new to talk about. And then we'll meet Lewis, shall we? Hey Nancy, I really need to finish this up. Sorry. Charlie, why do you why 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 are you like that, Charlie? Why why don't you why 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 don't you uh want to talk to Nancy? Hopefully Lewis will be here. Ah, yes, here he is now. Uh, he was reading a book while chewing on some marbles. Hello, Nancy. It's nice to meet you. Hello. I was so wrapped up in my book, I didn't hear you come in. My name is Lewis Chandler. Mm, yes, yes. Do you like my hair? I made it out of floor tiles. It's quite wonderful. I didn't mean to startle you. I'm Nancy Drew. 
I came out to help Rose and Abby with the renovations. Yes, well, I'm very glad you're here. Are you researching the history of this house? Actually, I'm a bit in the dark about this particular property. However, as far as Victorian mansions go, I don't see anything remarkable about this one. Um, it, it's a pretty cool mansion. What are you using the library for? Research. This library contains many rare books and documents that predate the Great Earthquake. It was quite a find for a student of the Victorian period, such as myself. What are you looking for in these books? I'm sorry, but I'm quite busy at the moment. And although I'd like to talk, I really don't have the time. Please, excuse me. Yes, he probably got a virus downloading that silly maze game uh, on his laptop. Oh, yes, okay. I'm sorry, but I really must finish my work. Perhaps Abby can assist you. Good day. Abby really doesn't have anything to do. She's not important, not like me, so you might as well just bother her, you know, not me, because uh, I'm busy. Seriously. Okay, you ready for the seance? Uh, now we can talk to Abby and uh, learn about the seance. I see you. No. Did you hear that creepy voice saying, I see you? See you. That that was creepy town. The spirits wish to speak to you, Nancy. Tonight I will channel their energies to deliver a message. Meet me down in the basement, if you dare. Please sit down. We really don't have time for this. Let us begin. We are gathered here tonight to contact the shades of those who have passed before us. Gaze into the crystal ball. It will answer all of our questions. What's that? <gasps> who has called me forth from the great beyond? We have. Are you the spirit known as Valdez? I was once called that in the world of the living. Are you the spirit who has caused these accidents? I have come back searching for her, my wife. Where can she be? The spirits have spoken. The seance is over. We've got a busy day tomorrow, and no more time for these games, Abby. And make sure you blow out the candles on your way up. I don't want to wake up and find the house on fire. So that was creepy and strange, and Rose is like, yeah, whatever, Abby. I don't I don't care. Just just put out these candles, okay? Whew. Yeah, that was that was scary times. <laughs> Crying. This game is so scary. Just random crying, and I, I don't know if you saw that shadow walking down the hall. <laughs> Why? Why? It's just scary times. Abby's asleep. I think we could go downstairs and uh, now check under that table. I think we've got new stuff for us to see down there. Ooh, can I destroy this with my crowbar? Yes! It's I the dark. I can't see where I'm going. Oh no! <laughs> and Nancy died. Well, don't go crawling around the basement in the dark. So, check this out. I think Abby was faking everything. She's got a projector and a, a, a day smoke machine and some sort of tape. Yeah, I think Abby's a phony. That's what I think. That's just me, though. See, uh, what we want to do now is sort of check. Let's check that stuff that I could check earlier. The, uh, the tiles. So when you get all three tiles into place, you can do this. 
hidden passageway. And this is the symbol for child. And we can spy on people too. Yeah. Well, basically, there's only one person we can spy on because there's only one person who uses this room. It's Lewis. So we're gonna spy on Lewis. Just need to reset the time to, you know, when Lewis is around. And I believe that lantern lets us explore. Ah, shadows of evil and 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 evil. I believe the lantern lets us explore this area. It's stuck. That way Nancy can explore without being it's attacked. It's so dark in here. Without being attacked and falling into this giant pit of water. So, that leads to this room. A hidden room. See, this is actually, uh, what do you call it? The one-way mirror? Two-way mirror, maybe? Yeah, so secret mirror. A term paper, and guess who's been living here? It's Charlie. Dear mom and dad, sorry I haven't written in a while, but things have been really busy. I'm working now, fixing up an old house. I'm learning a lot, and I'm very proud of the work I'm doing. I'm still in between places, so I'll let you know what my address is once I settle down. Say hi to grandma, mom and dad, hideaway, Iowa. El Diablo, the masked bandit who uh, stole a bunch of gold. Oh my. And here's another sign, King. What's that? Is that just a rat trap on the stairs? Oh, I would not want to sleep with my head so close to a rat trap. I would not. I would not. And this hidden passageway just leads to here. So... Now let's go upstairs. Abby's still snoring. Ah, ghostly bone! So, um, I took a picture of my phone. Ah, I forgot to play the piano. Whoops. So Lewis is there from noon to five. So let's set the alarm to shortly before Lewis shows up. That way we can spy on him. Yeah, Charlie needs to really clean up his trash. He's, he's such a slob. use the floppy disk on the computer. Yeah, we should use the floppy disk on the computer as well. So it goes in here. You just slide it into the front of the computer and let's see, it was Lewis and then Antiques. And the floppy disk is Fact from Fiction by Charlie Murphy. Profiles of Californian History for History 183. So was he actually writing his his paper on Lewis's computer? So he was studying about Diego Valdez, which we saw. El Diablo, Diego Valdez, all these various people who may or may not have existed, who may or may not be uh, people that have a bunch of gold hidden inside the mansion! For people wondering, floppy disk is the precursor to the CD. Well, it, you know, like most people use USBs, uh, you know, just let's just use a USB uh, port uh, today. Um, instead of having that, people used floppy disks, and they contain like three to five megabytes of memory. So it, it, it's not very good. I, I, I definitely use my USB stick instead of a floppy disk. You can see why they, fl they fell out of use. 
But uh, isn't it like the save icon for like Microsoft Word is still a floppy disk and stuff like that? So we're spying on Lewis now. Aha! That's it! Lewis, are you in there? I'll be right there. Yeah, he's got the, uh, the, the floppy disk, which I imagine is like three inches by three inches, and not like the super old kind, which is like the size of a piece of paper. Okay, so according to Lewis's uh, computer, the password is 564653 and then 4868. Now we can see things here. So, sir, I represent a client who'd like to sell their collection of Civil War gold bullion. My client- oh wait, this is Lewis's voice. My client wishes to remain anonymous during all business transactions, and I'm having trouble determining the nature of their collection. From what I gather, it's $50,000 in uncirculated bank standard gold coins issued between 1870 and 1880. What are you doing in there? What happened? Uh-oh. Um, I got caught snooping around, and Rose asked me to leave. Oh, no. Now you won't be able to solve the mystery. Better luck next time, I guess. That's too bad. And to think you could have saved the day. And helped out Rose. I know, I know. If only I had another chance. I'd be a lot more careful the next time around. Wow, so Lewis did not give me much time before he just just destroyed me. He's like, what What are you doing, huh? What? How dare you spy on me? 4653-4868. Okay, well, we'll have to make better use of our time and not read these things out loud. So he's selling a huge amount of gold. I guess that's relevant. And... This book, okay. Uh, this is the, the one, the, the man that used to work here. So, he worked for Miss Applegate, and they called it the Gumbo Fu. That's what they called this restaurant. Slash hotel, slash whatever. And here's the thing, Rick Arlen, back with a vengeance. Soap star heartthrob Rick Arlen renewed his contract with Worldwide Broadcasting, admits he had um, misgivings. Rumor persisted he was the victim of a stalker, and a teen detective named Nancy Drew was on the case. And uh, Nancy just kind of ignores the fact that, oh my gosh, Lewis knows that she was actually investigating a case. He knows she's a detective. Like, you'd think that would be big news, big important news, which would be very important. But, no, I don't think that comes up again. It makes me very sad. So now let's call everybody. Woo! Drew Residence, Hannah Groon speaking. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Nancy. Yeah, so that book, uh, you know, that, that phrase, gumbo foo, is the very important thing. That's why Lewis went, aha, large itch. Abby is very strange. She really is convinced there's a ghost somewhere in the house. I don't know Abby very well, but I never felt comfortable with her. I can't put my finger on it, but she just seemed, oh, I don't know, like she wasn't who she really was, like she was putting on an act. Like, she's lying, or she... Wait, wait, you met her at a theater, right? Doesn't it make sense that she was acting? Do you think Rose should be concerned about Abby? Oh, no, I didn't mean it in a bad sense. Abby has always been very helpful to Rose, and they've always gotten along very well. I, I, you know, when I said that she's always pretending and being a fake, I meant it as a compliment. <laughs> I met Rose's handyman, Charlie. 
He seems nice. Rose told me he's a fine young fellow, but a little rough around the edges. I believe she said he's studying history at a community college. Has Rose said anything about him and the accidents? Nothing particular. I know she's concerned that Charlie may have inadvertently caused some of them, but she doesn't think it was intentional. Okay, so maybe some of the accidents are just that, accidents. Did you know Rose has a resident expert on Victorians? Oh, yes. Rose has mentioned Lewis several times. She's really fond of him and is very grateful for his help. Oh, are they falling in love? Oh, is there more between them than what I'm seeing? Oh, no, they're not dating or anything, but I can tell Rose likes him very much. Does she want to date him, though? Have you heard about the seance Abby hosted for Rose and me? Seance? Good heavens. Has Rose ever mentioned someone by the name of Valdez? No. She never mentioned the name. Abby faked the seance. She rigged a table with a projector. Well, you didn't think it was for real, did you? Don't worry, Rose, about this. She has enough on her mind already. I just can't imagine why Abby would go to all that trouble. I just found a hidden attic. I wonder if it has anything to do with all these accidents. Hmm, perhaps it does. Nancy, keep this a secret until you get to the bottom of these strange events. Don't even tell Rose. The less everyone knows, the more you can investigate without creating suspicion. This house is full of surprises. I found a secret room in the basement where someone's been living. Strange accidents? Secret rooms? Seances? The more I hear about this house, the more I wonder what Rose has gotten herself into. Lewis is up to something. I saw him take a book from the library. That doesn't sound very suspicious. What was the book about? Lewis's book mentioned that this house was once called Gumbo Foo in the 1800s. That's nice, dear. I have no idea what that means. But give Emily a call. She knows all about San Francisco legends. You know, somebody brings up a good point. Nancy has a ton of friends who just appear in one game or one book, and then you never see that friend again, never gets mentioned again. I should get back to work. Goodbye. Don't work too hard. Yep, don't work too hard, Nancy. Let's call Bess. Hello? Hello, it's me. Hi, Nancy. How's the case coming along? Get this. One of the owners, Abby, thinks the place is haunted by a ghost named Valdez. A ghost? I'm glad I'm not out there. So tell us more about what's been going on. Do you know anything about the house's history? Abby hosted a seance and contacted the spirit who's haunting the house. Did you actually see the ghost? Yeah, right. I'm sure it was some kind of trick. Abby sounds suspicious. Yeah, maybe she's hiding something. She probably knows more about the house than she's admitting. I found a secret room in the basement, and it looks like someone is living there. Who could it be? Probably Charlie. Doesn't he spend most of his time down there? Look around for clues. Who knows what he's up to? Yeah, well, I found his, uh, his floppy disk. It's definitely Charlie who's hiding in that area. Do either of you know what gumbo foo means? It sounds Chinese. Call Emily. She'll know. Can you guys give me a clue? I'm not sure what to do next. Play the bandit's treasure on the piano. You never know what you'll get if you improvise a little bit. Aha, uh -huh, yes, yes, I will I do that. I should get going. Talk to you later. Bye, Nancy. Bye. And then let's call Emily. Making phone calls, talking to people, doing things and stuff. Emily Foxworth speaking. Hello, it's Nancy Drew. Hi, Nancy. How's your case coming along? Swimmingly. Have you heard of an antique dealer named Lewis Chandler? Nope, never heard of him. Do you know what the words gumbo foo mean? Hmm, sounds Chinese to me. Why don't you ask everyone what they think it means? It may have something to do with the house. In the meantime, I'll ask my friends about it. Gumbo foo. I should get going. Goodbye, Emily. Keep me posted, okay? Will do. 
Excellent. Okay, so I believe what we need to do is talk to everyone about Gumbo Fu. I think that's what we do at this point in the game. So let's do it. Hey Nancy, I see you survived Abby's seance. Man, that Veldez guy sure sounded creepy. Really? Were you spying on us? I guess. Were you down here then? I don't remember seeing you. Rose told me all about it. So how are things coming along? Anything I can help you out with? How do you like working for Abby? She's not bad. She can be a little weird. I think she gets on Rose's nerves sometimes. What do you mean? What do you mean? She always does a disappearing act whenever Rose needs her to do some work. And I think Rose is sort of hatty, you know? Really? So Abby's like, I'm not gonna work. I'm just gonna leave instead of work. Wow, Abby. Wow. Abby thinks the house is haunted. Do you? I'm not sure. Let's just say I wouldn't rule it out. But that's Abby's department, not mine. Charlie, I've got this floppy disk, and it's yours. Charlie, I found this diskette. I think it's yours. I was wondering where it was. Thanks a lot, Nancy. Luckily, I had a backup at the school. That must be an interesting paper you're writing. I just started to write it, so I don't know very much about the robbery. It's hard to separate fact from fiction, especially when most of the information is based on rumors. Whatever happened to the gold? Nobody knows. Some historians say that the bank faked the robbery to collect the insurance money. Was it El Diablo who stole the gold? Or someone else? It was definitely El Diablo. But no one knows who he was. In my opinion, El Diablo never existed. He was a composite of different outlaws from that era. Do you know what the words gumbo fu mean? I'm not sure. I've never heard that before. Had you come across any hidden passageways down here? You mean like a trap door leading to a room with skeletons or something? No, I haven't. No, I mean like the one that you're living in, Charlie. I'll let you get back to your renovation. See ya. Charlie, do you not remember that you left your, your floppy disk inside your secret hidden area? Is that something you don't remember? That's something he doesn't remember. Okay, he should be way more suspicious that Nancy found that. Okay, so it looks like it's... B? And then... C... D... E... E... G... A... And then G again? Yes, okay, that's the song. Big Gag. My love, here's the key you'll need. The bandit's treasure. So B-E-G-A-G, -E -G, those are the notes that you play. Those were the notes that were highlighted up in the attic. So let's go to the attic again and use this piece of paper. Oh, but first we're talking to everybody about uh, Gumbo Fu. Hello. Do you know what Gumbo Fu means? No, not that I can remember. How do you know Lewis? He stopped by one day to introduce himself. He seemed awfully curious about our property. But he's an antique dealer specializing in the Victorian period. He's been extremely helpful advising us on authentic decor. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. So long! Okay, let's go upstairs. Talk to Abby. I hope you're convinced now that the spirits are with us. These ghosts are here to stay. I'm convinced that this house is haunted. I'm just not sure who is responsible. Isn't it obvious? Senior Valdez and his wife, long lost soulmates wandering aimlessly in the netherworld, returning to this house to search for each other. Ah, <sighs> I only hope that one day I will be able to reunite them so that they may find peace. Yeah, Abby, I think you're lying. I think you're lying. I found out how you rigged the seance table with a projector. <laughs> that was a pretty good show you gave. Okay, so I staged part of the seance. But that still doesn't mean this place isn't haunted. Seances were very popular during the Victorian era, and I plan to entertain our guests with them. It'll be a great way to promote the place. I staged part of the seance. You staged all of the seance, Abby. You liar. Have you been creating these accidents to help your promotion? Of course not. 
I've had nothing to do with these accidents. They cost us both time and money. If you want to find out who's behind the accidents, ask our resident handyman. Do you mean Charlie? Ugh, it's clear to me that Charlie's totally responsible for the accidents. Who else could it have been? He's a really nice kid, but he has no idea what he's doing. Unfortunately, Rose doesn't want to fire him. And there's something suspicious about him. About the fact that he randomly showed up out of nowhere and said, Hi, hire me. What do you mean? The other day, I was down in the basement working for over an hour, and suddenly he sneaks up on me. I bet he was down there the whole time, watching me. I find it hard to believe that you were working for an hour, Abby. I, I find that hard to believe. How long have you known Rose? A couple of years. She has good business sense, but I think she needs to think more about advertising. Otherwise, we're just like all the other B&Bs in this town, and believe me, there's plenty of them. Do you know much about Lewis? It must be great having your own expert on Victorians. He owns Chandler Interiors, a very reputable antique store. I'm sure his clients will be quite interested in our bed and breakfast once they hear about our resident ghost. I heard someone crying in the hallway. Was that you? I told you the spirits were interested in you. Was it a woman crying? Yes, it was. How did you know? It must be one of our phantom residents. Do you think it was a ghost? Well, it wasn't me crying out there. Do you know what gumbo foo means? Gumbo foo? I love gumbo. What kind of gumbo is gumbo foo? Eh, uh, never mind, Abby. <laughs> Have you noticed the dead flowers in the parlor? No, I haven't. How strange. So when Abby said she was actually working in the basement, really she was just sitting down and eating chips. Does Charlie live around here? I'm not sure. He said he's between apartments. I think he said he's staying with friends until he can find a place of his own. Between apartments? That seems kind of odd. Not for San Francisco. Rents are really high, and there are so many kids thinking they can find cheap housing out here. It's sad to say, but a lot of them end up on the streets. Uh, I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Have a celestial day. Have a celestial day. Let's spy on Abby a little bit. I think uh, we're, we're, we, we can spy on Abby, sure. What you can do is break into Abby's room when she's not there, so she's gone from 3 to 6. I don't know what she's doing during those times. Yeah, what could she be doing? She just leaves for 3 hours every single day. Hmm. So now let's spy on Abby. Break into her room when she's not there. Woo! Celestial. Very nice. Ooh. Got cards. Handsome man. Soap opera magazine <laughs> from the previous game. Moon. That's another symbol. Palmistry thing. It's a picture of her or somebody else, it looks like. The Zodiac and you. Here's the Zodiac and you. Okay, so we have an order. I need to take a picture of this. Good. Got the picture. And then, guess what? Yeah, we have another... Uh, two-way mirror. Abby's been spying us as, spying on us as we've gone through the hallways. It's creepy. Dead flowers? I think she's been collecting those dead flowers. And we've got a tambourine for some reason. There's her little, uh, seance costume. Mastering the art of illusion. All the spiritualists in the turn of the century, none was as famous as Madame Arangue, noticed for her spider sapphire bracelets and heavy Russian accent. In her memoirs, I am the spider lady, Madame Arangue, 
revealed her secrets. For her, creating an atmosphere of illusion was just as important as the illusion itself. The best illusions were those created over a period of time are anticipated, anticipated by the audience. As an illusionist, you must always be aware of the influence that you have on the audience's perception of the events you create. Always establish an aura of intrigue and mystery. As you talk to your audience, try to plant seeds of illusion in their mind. Remember, illusions are about control, and you must always strive to maintain this control. Creepy. Here we steal her spider necklace thingy. And then we open up this with the spider. And we've got the sound effects. Abby was faking all the hauntings with her sound effects. And then just people talking. Okay. I see you. So creepy. I see you. <laughs> and I believe we can listen to the tape. Who has called me forth from the great beyond? And yeah, hidden cameras. Abby has just been spying on us the whole time, and she's just been evil and creepy, and I don't like it. Okay, good, good. Okay, we've got the, the spider necklace thingy there. Uh, we were going to go up the stairs. It's locked. It's locked. Wrong key. Why are those keys so similar, I swear? It's very difficult to tell them apart. Okay, here we go. So let's see. I put it here. Yeah. Find... Diego on stairs. Do you, do you read that note? That's the note? So that's the special note. It says find Diego on the stairs. I guess I have to use my crowbar again. Yeah, you know, if people found out that this bread and breakfast had all sorts of surveillance stuff and spy stuff, People would no longer go there. People would not go to this bed and breakfast. Even though it's cool to be haunted, it's creepy to be spied on at all hours of the day. Okay, let's see if I can spell the name Diego. Oh, wow. Looks like you have to do a lot of work. There we go. I think I've got it. Diego Coins. False Floor. Very good clue indeed. Diego. I, I accidentally shut this before I could read it. Diego, I've wanted for a long... I've waited a long time for your return, but have kept our treasure true. Here's a tool you'll need to find it. May your something never run out of luck. Your rainbow never run out of luck. E. The strange, the strand and moon, the, the stars and moon will shine on you if you begin your quest. Move like a knight upon something to quickly pass the test. Ah, move like a knight along that one board. Oh. I don't remember reading that before, but yeah, there is a puzzle where you can uh, move like a knight, I believe, in order to win very, very quickly. Okay, so let's call Emily. Oh. A uh, phone call first. <laughs> Creepy times. So I've asked everybody about Gumbo Foo. I got no response, dude. 
So, uh, Emily, you're gonna have to help me out. Hi, Emily. It's Nancy. Listen, my dear, I'm off to a photo shoot in Mexico, even though I don't know why they're sending me down there again. I just got back a couple of months ago, but who knows what goes on in my editor's mind, always thinking of new ways to make my life miserable. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yes, I'll find out what that phrase means before I go, okay? Okay, good luck. Thanks, Emily. And, uh, let's see if Hannah has anything new to talk about. Drew Residence, Hannah Groon speaking. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Nancy. I should get back to work. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, okay, well, I guess we can't talk to her about anything. Hello? Hi, Bess. What's up? You'll never believe this, but things have gotten even more complicated. I found some clues that there might be buried treasure in the house. Wow! Oh, Nancy, it sounds like you've got a real case on your hands. How can we help? Can you guys give me a clue? I'm not sure what to do next. Oh, I'm getting tired of this, aren't you, George? Ugh, yeah, time to get some sleep. Good, Good night. night! Okay. I should get going. Talk to you later. See ya! Bye! Their clue is go to sleep. Very helpful. Okay, very, very helpful indeed. No, 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 I need to talk to everybody about Gumbo Fu. I don't think I talked to Lewis about Gumbo Fu. Hello, Nancy. I was wondering whether you knew anything about someone named E. Valdez. E. Valdez. No, I've never heard of that name. But I'll jot it down and let you know if I come across it anywhere. What kind of antique store do you own? It's a gallery, not a store. And it's called Chandler Interiors, specializing in the Victorian period. I have clients from all over the world, and if I don't have what they're looking for, I find it. It's, it's a gallery, not a store. Thank you very much. Was this house once a hotel? That's hard to say. The house has been renovated many times, but several of its original features, such as the saloon and staircase, seem to indicate that it may have been a hotel. Unfortunately, there are no records on this house before 1906. What was the Ladies' Protection Society? A popular charity in the early 1900s. They helped widows and orphans. Do you think Charlie is doing a good job? Certainly. He's rough around the edges, but he's reliable and learns very quickly. He's just what Rose and I need. I won't keep you any longer. Good day. Notice Lewis is like, oh, he's exactly what Rose and I need. Like, like he's the one who's owning this place. It's really Rose and Abby, not you, sir. And there's that one scary sound. It didn't sound very scary if you ask me. It was like... Not, not much of anything there. Uh, okay. So now let's ask about Gumbo Fu. This is, this game does have nice music. Hello, Nancy. Do you know what Gumbo Fu means? Where did you hear that? So if you say it's a book, you get fired like this. I came across it in a book. No doubt the book I have locked in my briefcase. I thought someone had been in there. I think I'll need to have a word with Rose about this. Nancy. I'm ashamed of you. Everyone in this house expects some degree of privacy, and you have obviously violated that trust. Your behavior is completely unacceptable. No arguments. I cannot stand to have someone so inconsiderate in my house. I've arranged for Abby to drop you off at the airport. I'm sorry it has to work out this way. Goodbye. Really harsh, Rose. Really, really harsh. Hello, Nancy. Do you know what gumbo foo means? Where did you hear that? I read about it in a magazine. I see. As I recall, it means house of great books. After the great earthquake, many books and documents were stored in private homes to save them from the fires. The Chinese called those houses gumbo fu. I won't keep you any longer. Thank you, Nancy. It's funny. It's like, yeah, well, you stole the book. Did you forget that part, Lewis? 
I, I guess he didn't mention that when he, uh, uh, told Rose, Ah, now, Nancy's been reading my stuff. It's very not cool. I don't like it at all. I think you should fire her. Definitely, definitely fire her. And, uh, yeah, I guess we're going to sleep now. Set the alarm for noon. Oh, and here's a letter from Emily. I'm sorry I couldn't drop this off myself, but I'm out the door for a month-long photo shoot in Mexico. I spoke with my friend about gumbo foo. She said it means gold, treasure, mansion. Hasta luego! Interesting. So, Lewis was lying when he said gumbo foo meant house of gold treasures, or what, what did he say? LEAVE THE MANSION NOW! Ah! Oh! No! 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 We got a message in the haunted mansion! This is terrible! This is terrible! What, what do I do? What do I- What? I- I mean, I don't- I don't- I don't- And- 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 FIRE! No! Fire! Not a fire! Fire! Okay, that's- That's it's not too good. Late. I- Oh no! <laughs> How could everything go so wrong so quickly? No, okay, okay, uh, a fire, uh, grab the fire extinguisher, and, and then, and then you, you take the fire extinguisher, and then, and then, um, put out the fire. Okay, okay. It is so silly how Nancy looks at the fire and just goes, Fire. I talked to fire. everybody in the house, fire. and none of them can figure out what caused the fire. Maybe I should take Lewis's advice and cut my losses before it's too late. What advice? He has a client who might want to buy the place. Someone with more experience and money to finish all of the renovations. What did the fire department say? They think the fire was caused by sparks from the fireplace, since it doesn't have a screen. And I specifically told Charlie to buy one. How could he have forgotten? No. I am bound and determined to stick with this house no matter what. Nothing can drive me away. I don't care if it's fires, earthquakes, or Mr. Valdez with his gang of ghosts. Excuse me for prying, but why did you spend so much money to insure the house against fire? For protection. I've put my entire life savings into this house, and if it goes up in smoke, I'll lose everything. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Bye. <laughs> Nancy. Fire! Fire! Ooh, it's a fire. I'm glad you dropped by. You know, I wanted to tell you that you'll be alone in the house for a while. Everyone is going to the Winter Festival, and Charlie's studying for finals. I also took down one of the tapestries in your room for dry cleaning, and what was the other thing? Oh, a messenger dropped off a letter for you. I put it in your room. Oh boy, so we're here at the uh, endgame sequence time. We did it, everyone. We made it to the end of the game. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. Bye. Let's see. There is a haunting uh, inside uh, that one room. The room with the fire. That phoenix head moves, and I don't like it. What's this book? Oh, underground things in San Francisco. Yeah, the underground uh, tunnels. Oh, okay. Cool. That's cool. And what about this fire? It started with pieces of the letters from the drawer. You, you remember those innocuous letters? I think that fire was started on purpose. Like, Rose wouldn't burn her own letters, would she? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I think everybody should be gone at this point. Because everybody... Oh, hey, Lewis didn't leave. Ah, Nancy. What a shame to have lost those papers. And to think that we almost lost the house. Rose is very fortunate to have you here. Yes, I'm a superhero. Did you hear anything in the parlor before the fire started? No, I'm afraid not. I'm somewhat isolated here. With these thick walls, I barely hear anything. 
Were the papers very valuable? Not for my purposes, no. But they must have had some sentimental value. Do you think Rose should sell the house? I leave that decision up to her. She's put an extraordinary amount of time and money into it, and I'm not sure if she can afford what it'll take to complete the renovations. But whatever her decision, I will assist her however I can. I won't keep you any longer. Nice to see you again. Yeah, I wish Nancy could go to the Winter Festival. It sounds cool. I don't know what they're celebrating. I mean, obviously they're celebrating winter, but, like, how? What's the festival? Is there a parade? Is there food? Is there gumbo? I want some gumbo. Hey, Nancy. Hey, there's been another accident. You've got to believe me. I didn't have anything to do with it. I just hope Rose doesn't blame me for this one. Rose mentioned the fire screen you were supposed to get. But I did buy it. Lewis told me that it was the wrong type and said he'd get another one. So I returned it. And that's all there is to it? Everyone thinks I'm causing these accidents because I was always the last one there. But I had nothing to do with them. I can tell you this. There's something unusual going on in this house. So, do you have any proof? I'd better not say any more. Sorry. Really? Really, Charlie? Who was the last person you saw in the parlor before the fire? I've been working mostly in the basement, but I think I saw Abby go through those papers right before the fire. I'll let you get back to your renovation. Pasta la pasta. Mm, pasta. Is there pasta at the Winter Festival? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> let's go up these stairs. Like, I, I could hear Rose talking. That was so weird. Yeah, why, why was Rose talking when I tried to talk to Abby? Hmm. I don't know. I, I'm not crazy, right? You, you, you people could hear Rose talking. I'm going to switch the time so we can try to talk to Abby. No, I think Abby's, like, gone, gone. She just left for the party easily. I mean, she, she left for the party early. She wants, she wants to check out the Winter Festival. Hi, Nancy. Oh, there I can't she is. believe we had a fire. I can't believe it. I bet Charlie was down there before it started. Yeah, well, Charlie blamed you. Oh, it looks like Charlie and Abby are both blaming each other. Why do you say that? Because he's always around at the scene of these accidents. I told Rose to fire him, but she won't listen to me. Uh, I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Bright blessings. Hmm. Yeah, some sort of random fight between Rose and Abby. So, anyway, we're at the end of the game. As she said, uh, the tapestry was moved. So now we can check out this. This is a puzzle you want to... Uh, press these symbols in the correct order. So the correct order according to uh, the, the thing it was it, you know the one inside Abby's room. So rat then ox and then tiger. Um, which one's ox? No that's horse. Ox and tiger then rabbit, dragon, snake Rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, and monkey, horse, goat, and monkey, then rooster, dog, and then boar. I guess that's a pig, not a boar. So we need to do all these symbols in the correct order. Oh boy. These symbols. Okay, so this is number one. And then number two... Two looks like this, too. Three. Four. Five is this one. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, oh 
Hopefully this is correct. I hope this is correct. And then 10. Yay! Okay, so I actually... I got the solution pulled up uh, on my computer during one of those long uh, phone conversations. Last Will and Testament by Elizabeth Applegate Valdez. I, Elizabeth Valdez, make this my last will and testament. To my dear friend, you get this. My other friend gets this. My secretary gets that. And my husband, Diego, everything. You get everything, Diego. I love you so much. Some uh, jewelry. My dearest Elizabeth, I could never sully that sweet name by calling you Lizzie. You shall evermore be Elizabeth, my Elizabeth, the sweet dear woman who has honored me with her enchanting presence and grace. Tonight I ride on yet another perilous trip, but always so, but always to return to your beloved smile. Until then, please accept this bouquet of gardenia, your favorite El Diablo. So... Lizzie Applegate and Diego Valdez were married to each other. Something's missing it's here. very sweet. So this puzzle was you move around the board like a knight. So that means you go up one and then over two. Okay. Uh, over one and then up two. And then uh, down one and over two. That's how knights and chess work. Yay! We solved that puzzle. And then this is a slider puzzle. We need to create a phoenix. Oh boy. So, uh, a little difficult. Uh, what we're gonna do is start with the bottom left corner. Okay, uh, the bottom left corner is actually gonna be this. That one. It's gonna be a little wing. Yeah, you can see, you can see that now, right? So then, now I want the wing piece that goes above it, which could be this one. Yeah! And then the piece which goes, uh, there in the middle. Yeah! Okay, so now I've got this 2x2 two two piece. I want to get, uh, this 2x2, two two, uh, thing done. So that's gonna be... One of these things. I don't know which one. That one, okay, what piece goes above it? That piece goes above it. So like that, okay, and then what pieces go next? Uh, does that piece go next to it or no? No, this piece must. Actually, that looks, that looks perfect right there. Um, it's like that. So now I've got the two uh, left-hand corners into place. And now, uh, let's see. Bottom corners, perhaps? But that's not correct. Yeah, it's going to look like this. But this goes in the bottom left. Okay. More like this. There's the bottom. Okay, now I want to get this piece in, in, into place. Moving it like that. Yes. Yes. Woo! Okay, did it. Yay, and I got that. Yay, hooray! So we got that diamond eye. My dearest Elizabeth, only one soul on this great earth knows the two secrets those that circle my heart. My love for you and my secret destiny. Know that my intentions are the purest in all aspects. I'm a modest man and all... Oh, uh, yeah, that's a D. And all of the wealth that I have acquired by devious means are put to the, to the best uses, all given to the poor, the misfortunate, and the defenseless. And so I am, 
a poor, misfortunate, and defenseless man in the presence of your beauty. You have stolen my heart, dear Elizabeth, and all I ask is your hand in marriage to be mine forever, Diego. I do like the romance aspect of this story. Yep, okay. Okay, so let's back away. We found the hidden safe. Good job. Hooray for us. And it's basically this tapestry. So, the, the symbols in this tapestry. So, child, beginning, ten... Uh, no, no. Child, beginning, daughters, four... And every single line has one of those numbers we had to uh, put into the thing. So, now to fill the second half of that challenge, which was... <laughs> A ghostly laugh. No, 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 no. The eye of the phoenix on the sun's rays are at their highest. So, eye of the phoenix here. I've got the eye of the phoenix. Yes, yes. The sun's rays reveal the golden treasure. Oh, I shouldn't ignore the golden treasure. It's stuck. Let's do this. So, uh, we're gonna have the culprit reveal right now. Culprit's gonna be here. Gold! And to think I was standing on it all along. <laughs> ah! Too bad no one will ever find out about it. Lewis? I knew it! There must be over a million dollars in here. I've got to stop him before he gets away. Okay, so we need to stop Lewis before he gets away, and if we take the creaky stairs, we will be hurt. I mean, heard. Heard. He will hear us, and then go, Oh, well, I'm out of so here. So long, losers. I'm not a loser, okay? It's not cool. And you just Meanie. let him get away? There was nothing I could do. I'm sure there was something you could have done to stop him. Well, you probably had to act fast and didn't have enough time. I guess this mystery's solved. Unfortunately, the bad guy got away. This time. I've got to stop him before he gets away. So go up the staircase that is not creaky. And then you just drop the chandelier on Mr. Chandler. Hey, hey, Mr. Chandler. You know what your name sounds like? Chandelier. What? Hey. Hey, hey. Get me out of here! Dear Bess, I'm just about finished with my renovation work and counting out all of those gold coins. Lewis was behind all of the accidents, hoping to pressure Rose into selling the house so he could find the treasure himself. Although Rose and Abby may not have a legal right to the gold, the bank the coins were stolen from will still give them a reward for finding it. The house also has gotten a lot of publicity with all of the news stories. And the place is booked solid for the first month of its opening. I guess a haunted bed and breakfast with hidden treasures is all the rage these days. Even if there are no such things as ghosts. Uh, I think. See you soon, Nancy. Luckily, Lewis is still alive. I, I'm surprised he wasn't, like, mortally wounded by having a chandelier drop on his head. That looked like a very heavy chandelier which dropped from at least 10 feet. Well, we solved the mystery, everybody. That was Nancy Drew, Message in a Haunted Mansion. I hope you enjoyed uh, my, uh, my, my little playthrough of the game. Hope everything's going well for everybody, and we'll just sit here and watch the ending credits, and then uh, that will be the end of this video. Lewis, hey, get me out of here! Nancy, sorry, I've got to write a, a letter to Bess right now. Later. <laughs> yeah, Lewis did tattletale on Nancy earlier. Um, Lewis is just not a nice guy. That chandelier belongs in a museum. Yeah, I kind of destroyed a very valuable chandelier. Maybe I can use some of the money um, 
from the gold to pay to fix that chandelier? Maybe? That would be helpful. Yes, indeed. That would be very helpful. Lots of special credits in this game, huh? And there's that slogan, for girls who aren't afraid of a mouse. That was uh, her interactive slogan when this game was released. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the live stream.